Hi, this is Guy Delosier, Senior Applications Engineer at Go Engineer. Today I want to talk about Instant 3D, the basics. Instant 3D has been around for quite a while. It's done some really nice, nice things, but there's a lot of mysteries here about how it works and things for new users. So let me run through some things here to show you how things work. I've got two sketches here. One is red, one is orange. If you didn't know you could do that, all you have to do is right click on a sketch and pick sketch color down here on the left in the feature tree and give it a color. I've also given it a thicker line, both of these, and I do that with the line format toolbar. And I have it down here, docked down here in the bottom. So if I select a line of a sketch, I can change the thickness of the line or the color or whatever I want to do. I've got these two sketches. I want to extrude the rectangular sketch. So I'll just click on it. A little arrow comes up. Grab this and drag it. So I can just go either direction with this. Now what's really nice, what's really nice here, and it's not obvious, when I'm dragging this, if I hold down the M key, it does a mid-plane extrusion for me. There we go, mid-plane. And if I let go of the M key before I'm done, then it goes back to a single direction. Well, that's what I want. I want a single direction. Now let's make that about four inches. I can see the blue extrusion for the distance or the, that I was extruded and uh, the length and width. Now what's nice about Instant 3D is I can just grab these and move them. I don't have to do anything special. If I want to change a dimension to a, uh, to a specific value, one click on here and I can make it whatever I want. If I don't have any dimensions, one click on the part and on the face of it and all the dimensions come up on that feature. Now I have this other sketch here and now what I want to do is I want to use this to extrude with two. A couple different things I can do here. If I select down here at the bottom of the circle or someplace below the solid body and I grab this and drag it, I get a boss. If I push it in, I get a boss. Well, whoop de doo right? Now the nice part is if I push it in like that and let go, I can choose up here to do a cut. Okay, let me just undo that. If I select up here, there's the same boss, automatically makes a cut for me. Okay, and either way, if I make the cut like that and I said, oh no, that should have been a boss, I can just select here and grab the little blue spot and drag this. Or I can uh, click on the arrow just like originally and drag it. Now if you notice over here in the feature tree that says it's boss extrude 8. Handy dandy. If I roll this back like this now it's cut extrude 8. Boss extrude, cut extrude. What do you want? How do you want it? Okay so this lets me change things, move stuff around anytime I want to get this exactly how I want it. Now I want to put a fillet on this edge here so I'll pick the fillet command and I'll pick this edge and I'll make it a couple hundred thou, maybe three, and apply that. Okay, now let me zoom in here a little bit. If I select the fillet, I got this little pink gidget here. I can just grab that and drag that fillet. Now, one of the things about Instant 3D that's not as convenient as without Instant 3D, if I want to copy this fillet, let's say to this face over here, I have to grab this little white spot right there, hold control, and drag that over there. Undo. If Instant 3D is turned off, I can hold control and click anywhere on that fillet and drag it and drop it. That's a little bit more convenient if you've got to copy a bunch of things. Undo. It makes it easier if it's off if you've got to copy several things at once. Then the boss decides again, oh, that should have been a cut after all, and I, but I've already got this fillet on here. I can grab this and just drag this back and it automatically applies the fillet right to that edge. If I want fillets on this back edge, I can either edit this fillet and pick that edge or I can just hold, uh, you know, select it, hold control and pick the little uh, white spot and drag it back there. I did not drop it. so. I did not do that. So let me bring this back out here. Now something else that's not real obvious is these little arrows here. When I grab one of these arrows and drag this, immediately 
I get the relationships box up here. They're external relationships. What do you want to do about that? Do I want to get rid of them or do I want to keep them and reattach them later? Ah, forget it. I'll just delete those and then I'll put them back at my convenience. So I can grab this stuff and I can move it pretty much anywhere I want. If I'm looking for some particular look to something, this is ideal. <clears throat> if I'm looking for precision, this isn't it. Well, I can make it pretty precise. I got a scale here, I can move it, but that was from where it was. Okay, so it's not positioned where anywhere where I'd want it perhaps. I would have to go back and edit the sketch and redimension that to where I wanted it. Originally it was in the middle of that edge. So there's a lot of interesting little things here we can do with Instant 3D in, with the basics. Now, one of the things I did not show, and I should have, when I was, when I first started this out, let me just shut this thing off. When I'm working with the sketches here in Instant 3D, if I double click on the sketch, I'm in that sketch, and I can adjust that sketch. If I double click away from it, I am gotten out of the sketch. I cannot be in the sketch to extrude things with Instant 3D. I cannot be in the sketch. So once I'm out of the sketch, no problem. Same thing here. If I double click on that, I'm in the sketch. Uh, double click away from it and I'm out of the sketch. Click here. That's it, the basics. Guy Delosier, Senior Applications Engineer, Go Engineer. Have a great day. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.